he'd just had a heart attack um, a year before uh, in December 2019. It was actually the day after he said, we are getting married. Uh, he had a heart attack and drove across the N2, which is the main road going through Sedgefield here, and landed on one of the um, estates uh, after going through two fences and lampposts. And when I got to him, uh, he was up the car. The car was a right off. There were police and uh, people swarming all over the place. When I went back to my doctor, he started off by saying, okay, here are your, these are your results. And he said, and Ramona, it, it is your duty. And I thought, here we go, the statin. And uh, he said, it is your duty to tell people where, wherever you can, whoever you meet, about this way of eating. Ramona, how did you find Carnival? Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, my story starts about 30 years ago when I was in my 20s. I'm 54 now. And uh, in my 20s, I started having very serious gut issues. And uh, I couldn't figure out why. And initially, it wasn't that frequent was a once off maybe once a week or uh, once every two weeks. But um, it started becoming more frequent and more severe. And I didn't know what it was at the time. I went to the doctor and he at that stage said it was something called spastic colon, which is managed by managing your stress. Diet was never mentioned. Um, so I sort of just carried on with it. He did give me some antispasmodics, which didn't really do anything, um, and I just carried on with it until eventually it was a daily occurrence and it was affecting my quality of life. And um, I couldn't really carry on, so eventually I was referred to two gastroenterologists that uh, specialize in, in these kind of conditions. And they scoped and poked and did all sorts of blood tests and, and everything. I was with them for a couple of times until eventually they ruled out ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease as well as uh, cancer, which I, I was worried that I had cancer. And um, they said I basically had IBS. So I went away with that. Um, you know, I was happy that I didn't have cancer, but still it didn't make any sense to me. And once again, diet was never mentioned. So uh, I carried on with it for a couple of years. And then eventually it just got so bad that I went back to them and I said, this just isn't normal. And I have no quality of life. I mean, I was carrying on studying and working and doing whatever I needed to do and had a social life. But, and no one really knew about it. I don't know how I was able to hide it from, from everybody except my parents and my boyfriend at the time. Um, but I did. And then when I landed back in their rooms, I said, I, I can't carry on like this. Please give me a colostomy bag so that I don't have to worry about, um, you know, frequency and the cramps and the pain and the unpredictability and the urgency of it. And uh, I said, give me a bag or otherwise I'm, I'm probably going to end up taking my, whole, my own life because this is no way to live. And uh, they eventually consulted with each other and with me, and they said that um, they would try doing something called, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, I've got it written down, and uh, where they take some salt mesh, uh, put it around the colon uh, in an operation, and basically try and stabilize the colon to uh, minimize the spasm. And uh, I agreed to that because I was at uh, my wit's end. And I, I think I was 21 or 22 at the time. So I was very young to be having something as serious as this. Um, so I, I had the operation and it took a long time to recover from it. But uh, I did recover and I did get some relief. I would say probably about 20% relief. But uh, it, it started getting worse and worse and worse again over the next, I would say, 
25, 30 years. Well, uh, 25 years, because I've, I've been in remission now for, for quite a while. And this carried on going for, for the next 20 years or so. And um, what actually did give me some relief was when I went with my mom for some of the medical issues she was having. Um, it just came up in one of the, the doctor's appointments. And um, it was mentioned that sometimes antidepressants can help with IBS issues, with frequency and pain issues. And I'd never heard of this, but I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm going through a bit of a bad place, so let me try. So she put me on a SSRI, and um, after day four, I couldn't carry on with it because my issues became ten times worse that I couldn't finish the week on it. So I went back to her and I said, well, that didn't work. And she said, well, maybe with your case, we should try another um, antidepressant. And I mean, I was just very confused at the stage, like, how can this help? I knew about the brain gut access and the, the you know, the, the connection there. So I thought maybe let me give it another try with the um, trepoline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, a very old antidepressant, which was used, I think, in, in Vietnam soldiers and post-traumatic stress disorder and stuff like that. So I took that, and after one day, I felt a difference in the frequency and the urgency and the unpredictability. So somehow, it did something, and it was amazing. And I would say that actually saved my life and gave me back quality of life. So that was great, but the only thing is that you, you can only take it very low doses for IBS and um, only at night because it's zonkia. You know, it puts you to sleep. But that was fine. I thought I could deal with it. And it, it gave me back a certain quality of life. And then um, once we moved to Sedgefield uh, here on the Garden Route, I started looking into this a little bit further and started looking into diet and looking into why trepoline worked and more into IBS and more information started coming out, you know, especially with the event of internet and Google and YouTube, I, I found out a lot. So um, then I looked into it and I wanted to try something called cholestyramine, which is a bile acid um, binder. Uh, I just wanted to see how it would work because I thought maybe my IBS was brought on uh, and the, the diarrhea and stuff was brought on by bile acid malabsorption, BAM. So I tried this, it's an over-the-counter medication, and um, I tried it, and it worked just as well as the trepoline. So I was quite happy to get off a, a chemical um, medication, you know, antidepressant, and go on to the, the cholestyramine. And um, I, I took very little of it, and it, it worked really well. But every now and again, I would still have a flare, and I was just wondering how I could get rid of this and that to feel normal, which I hadn't felt in 30 odd years, 40 years maybe. So I tried um, YouTube, and somewhere along the line, Carnival came up. And Dr. Baker came up, and Dr. Ken Berry came up, and uh, later on, you came up, obviously. But this was in about 2020, um, and I decided I wanted to try this. It wasn't going to kill me, even if I did it, if I could only do it for seven days. So I did. I jumped right in. Uh, after one watching one of Sean Baker's videos, I jumped right in, and it was horrendous. Um, I mean, I must say that the transition was, uh, like death on a stick. Uh, I had absolutely no energy. I had a headache from hell. I had, I thought IBS was bad. I suddenly had loose stools, like there was no tomorrow. The cravings were out of this world. I mean, I obviously still had all the sweets and all the chocolates and everything in, in my house. And um, I, I 
it took every ounce of discipline to stay away from them, and sometimes I couldn't. Um, and that carried on for seven days. So I, I don't know if that was a combination of carb withdrawal or keto flu and oxalate dumping, so basically like a deep detox going on. I, I'm not quite sure. But it carried on for seven days, and then it was gone. And all I did during that time was uh, fast a little bit because I was just so nauseous and I didn't know what was going on. Take some flakes of, of Himalayan pink, uh, pink Himalayan salt and water and just try to get through. And I did. And on day eight, I woke up and felt like a different person. My IBS was gone. Uh, just to, to list a couple of the things that, uh, that just changed literally overnight. The brain fog went away. I didn't know I had brain fog and until it was gone. It, it was the weirdest feeling. And with that clear, happy, uh, no stress, I didn't really have anxiety, but um, a, a stable mood. Um, I, had, I noticed that when I was getting up from a chair that my knees were getting, and I thought, okay, well, I'm 50 odd, so, you know, maybe it's, it's age. And uh, that was gone. The IBS, which was obviously the biggest thing, that was gone. Like, I wasn't aware of food going in, or uh, I'd always enjoyed coffee, but coffee never enjoyed me. You know, it, it wasn't like a two way relationship. So suddenly I was able to drink coffee that morning. Um, the the bowel movements were suddenly normal and um, not this urgency and unpredictability from that day onwards. Um, so the other thing was when I turned 50, uh, which was about four years ago, so just before I started the carnivore diet, suddenly I noticed that my genes weren't fitting the way. I'm, I'm a gene girl through venom and through and they weren't fitting and it was just you know I couldn't have shrunk these genes that much you know in a month or two months so um, I didn't like that and um, that was also I, I started becoming a little bit moody apparently my, my husband who I'd only been married to at that stage for a year can attest to that um, and those symptoms suddenly just disappeared and also then within I would say two months after starting carnival the weight started falling off so I lost about eight kilos in two months and I didn't have that much to lose I was 64 kilos um, but all of the weight that I was carrying was around my belly and that just disappeared with no exercise. Yes, I am active. I do play golf and I do play bowls, but not like on any regular basis. And it just dropped off with, with absolutely no effort. And then with that, I also noticed that if I want to build muscle, like now, if I want to build muscle, I'll lift Doug's weights a couple of times a day and or a couple of times a week. And suddenly I've, I've, I've got guns and I've never had that my whole life. I've never had that, even though I've always been fairly athletic and I've played tennis and I've, I've done lots of things in my life. Um, but I've never been able to build muscle like this. I even joined gyms in the past and never stuck with it and did yoga and never stuck with it. And now it's just effortless. So that, that's really amazing. The other thing that I definitely have noticed is, uh, so obviously no medication, which is fantastic, and uh, no doctors. I've been to one doctor here in Sedgefield once to in order to get my lab, and that's been the most amazing thing. Um, my skin texture is better um, than ever before. My hair is smoother; it doesn't look like it now. But and the keratosis pilaris, which was on the back of my arms and on my thighs. That's completely gone. Um, I haven't been to a dentist in like eight years since we've been here in Sedgefield. But I used to notice that there was always a little bit of blood in the basin after brushing my teeth. Uh, but I thought that was normal. 
but that doesn't happen anymore. That's completely gone. So all in all, just really amazing results. And um, I was obviously worried about the, the high triglycerides and high cholesterol and all of that. But um, I'd never got a baseline. So last year I went for just to have blood drawn. So that's after being carnival for about three years, but not strict carnival. I must say in the beginning I was very strict. Um, but uh, since my husband's joined me on this journey, um, we I don't like to call it cheat, but we do have some meals that are not carnivore, that aren't even keto. Um, and I'm able to tighten, tighten it up when I need to, when I feel any IBS things coming back or a couple of uh, kgs coming back on. I just dial it back with a bit of fasting and carnival and I'm right back on track so it's it's like a lever that I pull and it's, it, it really is amazing but I do know that if I if I need to go strict I can it's totally sustainable um so I've got some numbers here do you would you like me to the numbers right okay the the my triglycerides we we are obviously in different metrics but I, I did convert it my Triglycerides are 22. That's milligrams per deciliter. So that's uh, pretty low. The HDL is 61 milligrams per deciliter. LDL, brace yourself, 228. So very high. Cholesterol, so total cholesterol, 282. Very high. Fasting insulin, uh, was six. That's um, international milli, international units per liter. Fasting glucose was ninety five milligrams per deciliter. Uh, hemoglobin H one H one C was five point five, and the CRP was less than zero point four. So this was just like a, a moment in time. And by the way, my blood pressure is normally like 90 over 60, so pretty low. And they're normally a little bit worried about that. But um, I'm able to, I feel fine most of the time. And if I feel that I'm feeling a bit faint or whatever, I have some salt, always have, and chase it with a bit of water. And that normally fixes it. So um, yeah, when I went back to my doctor, who happens to be ketogenic, which is quite unusual. Yeah. So I um, went to him and uh, he started off by saying, okay, here are your, these are your results. And he said, and Ramona, it, it is your duty. And I thought, here we go, the statin. And uh, he said, it is your duty to tell people where, wherever you can, whoever you meet, about this way of eating, whether it's ketogenic, ketovore, low carb, carnivore, it is your duty to tell people about this because you are just so healthy and you know you've, you've turned your life around. So I was really happy about that. I haven't had a CAC score. People don't really know about that. Congratulations! And you know when you're listing those things off. You know, if you were just telling one of those things to a person in isolation, it probably would feel, I mean, obviously, except for the IBS stuff, but it probably feels like a small thing, you know, like gums not bleeding anymore or something. But when you put all of those things together, it's just life changing, right? It is completely life changing. And I mean, mine are when it's all relative, mine are so small compared to. The other people that you've interviewed i mean but but yet it's relative to me because my quality of life was was so poor at one stage um, even though i was happy and i'm a, a happy happy go lucky person but the the health issues were just pulling me back and you know for me it was big the the changes are big but i mean i totally like understand other people that have had these mega changes and it's not about the weight it's never about the weight it's about 
just the information going down and addictions and cravings and and just being free, free from food. I used to mm. think about food 24-7. Uh, think about while I'm eating breakfast, what am I going to eat for lunch or as my snack or tonight or where am I going to go? And that's mm, yeah. the weirdest thing. It's no longer entertainment. It is nutrition. And I it like almost it. feels... It almost feels like everyone's walking around with a ticking time bomb and when you find carnivore and you can stick to it, it's like you've diffused it. Absolutely. And the thing is you want to share this with everybody that you meet. And in the beginning, when you start sharing it, the, the curtain just comes down. You know, people just get these blinders on and it's like they don't want to hear it. It's the most bizarre thing. I mean, when I started, um, I, I got very weird looks. I mean, we have a couple of socials at the golf club. My husband that I'd only been married to for about a year, he would put me down in public, which is totally not like him at all. But because it's so left field, people don't understand it. And, um, you know, they'd say a heart attack on a plate so when they'd see me come back and, and I never let carnival hold me back, you know, eating at social events. Even if there's some seed oils in there or some flour in the sauce or whatever, I would tuck in, I'd take some of the sauce off or do whatever. But it, it never held me back. So, and the food was never the reason for, or it no longer was the reason. You know, it used to be the reason, oh, the food and, and, you know, we can eat lots of desserts and, and also, and that just went away. So now it was about the people. And um, they, my husband used to push back a lot and say, yeah, she's the, the crazy, crazy carnival, only eat meat. And, and I mean, I, I took it for a long time from everybody and from him. Um, until one day I said to him, this far, no further. We've got a big problem if you're not going to sort of support me. I don't expect you to eat like this, even though I'm cooking and I'm cooking all the extra veg and all the extra things for you and all the sweets and everything is still in the house. Um, I will carry on doing it, but I need your support. And then I said, and, and if you're not going to change your way of eating at least a little bit, then we've got an even bigger problem because he just had a heart attack um, a year before uh, in December 2019. It was actually the day after he said we are getting married. Uh, he had a heart attack and drove across the N2, which is the main road going through Sedgefield here, and landed on one of the um, estates uh, after going through two fences and a lamppost. And when I got to him, uh, he was up the car. The car was a right off. There were police and uh, people swarming all over the place. And I said to him, babe, you've had a heart attack or a stroke. And he said, no, 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 no. I've, I've only had a bit of heartburn. And I was like looking around at all of this and like, I don't think so. And our GP, our ketogenic GP picked him up. And um, I looked after the car and while the, the tow guys were there. And um, the GP brought him back and said he can't really see anything on the test that he's just done in his room. But um, he, he needs to look at them again. So we sorted out the car and the tow, the tow truck and everything, came back home, about to have a glass of wine and a cigarette <laughs> outside on the, on the veranda, yeah. And the GP phones and says, no, you need to go an hour away to the hospital in Moscow Bay um, and the cardiologist will be waiting for you. So Doug was like, well, can't I at least have a glass of wine and a cigarette? <laughs> and the GP said, nope, got to go now. So um, we went through and he had a stent put in on the Widowmaker artery. So we were lucky that, that he's still with us. And, of course, his friend said, you know, if you didn't want to marry her, then you, you didn't have to go have a heart attack. 
but um, I was the one that <laughs> that didn't want to get married the whole time. And uh, I'd said to him when I saw him at the site, I said, we need to cancel the, the priest for now. I'm not even religious, but uh, he'd organized, because he knew I'm not the marrying type, he'd organized for, for his daughters to come down and the priest to come onto our property and, and marry us officially. And he said, no, 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 now we're really getting... So he got married with, well, we got married with him with a purple eye. It looked like he had eye shadow because that's where the airbag had gone off when he crashed into the, the fences and the, the lampposts. Um, so, yeah, we ended up getting married anyway. But the reason why he had a heart attack, even though he'd been on a stent for 30 years, um, that didn't prevent the heart attack. And he's quite a slim guy, but he had put on a lot of weight from golf. You eat a lot of pasta. You eat a lot of pies. Um, you know, and it's, it's a very loose kind of lifestyle. And he put on probably about 15 kgs, but mainly around his, his you know, in visceral fat and around his belly area. And um, that is probably what indirectly caused the heart attack. So nine months later in September of 2020, I'd started carnival. I'd done it then for three months. Um, by the time I said to him, you need to get on board because otherwise we've got a big problem or at least support me. And in that moment, he said, okay, I'll do it. And um, we had about two months before he had to go for his one-year checkup. It was postponed slightly. And um, he'd been on blood thinners, on antiplatelet coagulants, and a beta blocker, and still the statin, and everything since the heart attack. And I wanted him off all of the stuff because I'd started researching medications and side effects and all the ones that he was on. And so we had about two, two and a half months with him being strict carnivore, he, he did it. And then we went to see the cardiologist. He scanned him and couldn't, he said, your arteries look perfect. Then we had blood drawn with our GP here um, to check uh, because I wanted him off the statin. I'd spoken to the cardiologist about getting him off the statin, and he said, I never recommend that. Young cardiologist, I never recommend it, but it is Doug's choice. So he put me in a bit of a sticky spot. But then we went to the GP and um, had blood drawn. And his A1C was, was 5.2, so really low. Um, and his, the rest of his numbers were, were good. The LDL was still within range. So I said to, to the GP, I, I want him off statin and all the other medications, which we did. We dropped everything overnight. And Doug has been doing really well. And the weird thing is my mom and, and dad, my dad has passed away in, in January, unfortunately. But um, they've been carnival for about a year and a half. And in August, uh, mom's 84 now. Actually, she's 85 now. Um, she was four, yeah. And uh, dad was 91 when he passed away. But last year in August, uh, he had a stroke and a heart attack more or less the same time in August and they managed to revive him and emergency ablation and, and all this kind of thing and when he came to I was actually I'd driven down it's a five hour drive down to Cape Town to where they are and um, they woke him up and they wanted to feed him you know a high fructose corn syrup and, and it's by a tube and I saw him just as, he, as they were bringing him out of the coma, and he looked pretty good to me. So I went to the guest house and cooked him a steak and eggs with butter in a glass pie. He always used to make it for me, and went back to the hospital and tried to feed him, and he ate. He ate pieces of steak with his own hands, and he just had a stroke and heart attack. Mild stroke, but a, but a major heart attack and was eating this with relish, and I said to them, take this bag and take it back to the pharmacy. We don't. No, 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 we can't take the feeding tube out. He's in ICU. We can't take the feed. And I said, 
But look, he's eating with the feeding tube in. He's eating steak and eggs. And they looked at this, and he kept trying to rip out the, the feeding tube, which goes through the nose. And I said, Daddy, you're not allowed to do that. And he kept looking at me and saying, Aus, uh, out, out in German. And eventually I said to the nurse, who's 24, who's with him the whole time so that he doesn't do things like that. And she said to her, she could see he was strong. And uh, she said, I have to go to the next room uh, for about a minute. And she just looked at me and I said, okay, I understand. So she went, but she was still in, in eyesight. And he ripped this thing out. And it was about a meter that went into his stomach. But he just kept on pulling and pulled it out. And because he was eating normal food, it was fantastic. It was the, the best thing that, that could have ever happened. And he just carried on eating from strength to strength. And he didn't touch the hospital food because what they give you is horrendous. The only thing that I did give him was the, uh, I bought him a keto shake. It's got MCT oils. It's got some rubbish in there as well. But it, it really it, it helped him get over that little hurdle. And uh, then two days later, the main cardiologist phoned me and said, he's in such good health that they want to replace the valve, which was, was faulty. It was mis misfire, misfunctioning. So they'd never done that on a 90-year-old or 91 year old ever before and um, my mom and I gave permission and they did it and um, within two days uh, he was standing at the window waiting for me to take him home on a one and a half hour trip up to back up to Britannia Bay on the west coast he wants to go home so that's that's what happened with dad and my mom has also been carnivores at the same time as him um, for about one half years, and uh, she's dropped a lot of weight and feels great, and mentally, I think it's helping her. Uh, I, I don't know if there was starting dementia, but I think the the high fat. I've said her take a little bit more butter. I think it's helping them. So dad has no. in the meantime in January, mm. but um, not not related to carnival. Um, and he was 91. He was a good 91. And mom's doing very well. So how do you eat day to day? Okay, I would uh, say I eat one or two meals a day, depending on what is happening in my day. If um, I'm playing golf, we generally boil six eggs for the two of us. And we have that at about 11 o'clock. We normally play early morning golf. And so we'll have those eggs at about 11 o'clock on the golf course, wherever we are. That's easy. And, um, but if Doug's playing golf on his own and I'm at home, sometimes I'll cook, sometimes I won't, um, in the morning uh, or at 11 o'clock. It just, just depends what I feel like. Quite often I forget, which means that I'm not hungry and my body doesn't need anything. And other days, I'll uh, cook eggs and bacon and or pork sausages or leftovers from the night before. Uh, and then I'm good to go. And then um, normally at about 5 or 6 o'clock, when Doug comes home or we come home, um, I'll have burger patties. We have that with cheese. Like I said, I'm not, we are on strict carnivore anymore. So I need to be transparent about that. So we'll still eat avos. And uh, sometimes I'll put pickled cucumber with it if we feel like it or if I remember or whatever. Um, other times we'll do steaks, ribeyes, sirloins, rump steaks. Uh, Doug loves oxtail, which is slow cooked. Um, I'll just put salt with it and maybe some paprika. So we still do spices, which is also not carnival. I also still do coffee. Uh, well, we, we both do. And uh, lots of mince, mince beef or ground beef, I think you call it. Chicken, I don't do great on chicken. I'm hungry about a, an hour after eating it. But he likes uh, chicken wings, drumstick pies. So we'll have that maybe once a week, once every two weeks, uh, or whatever I can get away with not doing. I'm happy with, I prefer my steak. Um, and then we have um, dried 
sausage. This is dried sausage or bultong. That says a snack, but we, we very rarely, rarely snack. But if we do, it's here. Uh, or salami sticks. Um, sometimes we'll have nuts. Um, Doug still drinks alcohol almost daily. Um, I hardly drink anymore. If I feel like it, I will. I'll have a vodka and a diet soda. Um, he has a vodka or gin and diet soda. Um, and sometimes we'll have an ice cream, but not every night. It's when we feel like it. And I never consider it a cheat. It's just something that we eat. And if I don't feel like it or I don't feel good afterwards, I know why. And um, otherwise, double cream, um, uh, Greek yogurt, and strawberries and blueberries and things like that every now and again in season. So we, we're pretty relaxed and even some chocolate sometimes with our coffee at night with cream. So we, we're very relaxed and I'm not, I, I really don't care what I eat as long as I feel good. And I know what makes me feel good is mainly animal. If you were giving someone advice about how to start carnivore, what would you tell them? Well, I would probably ask them, what is your why? I mean, they see me and they see Doug and they feel inspired by, by that, obviously. But um, you, you, you do need a very strong why and weight loss ain't going to cut it. So that would be my first question to them. And then if they're still uh, interested, I would say the first thing would be to inform yourself how metabolism works in the human body. Um, and then to maybe watch one or two videos by one of the doctors just to get um, confirmation. Uh, and then cut out sugars and carbs. And go slowly. Don't do what I do. It's, it's not fun. And then cut out the veggies. And then keep adding animal products because you need to substitute. You, you have to eat. So keep adding more animal products and whatever you feel like. And have some patience and keep it simple. And don't overthink it in the beginning. It will all happen gradually in terms of, you know, if you still want the sweet taste or you, you can't do without the sweet taste, have your artificial sweetness, have your stevias, have your spices. It's not going to kill your results. So just heal and enjoy. That would be my, my main advice. Very nice. So, um, Ramona, if people want to reach out to you, um, do you have any social media, like a YouTube or anything? No. <laughs> this is my first interview that I've ever done. <laughs> So um, I'm very new to this, but I'm, like I said to you, I'm toying with the idea of, of maybe getting the message out there. I'm just not quite sure how to do it. You've been a, a, a big um, instigator in this, so let's see where we go from here. But we'll keep up to date and um, keep in touch. And if there's anything happening on that side of things, I'll definitely, you'll be the first to know. No worries. So. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate your time. Dave, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I feel honoured for you to have interviewed me and um, we'll definitely keep in touch. Thank you.